What is up guys and welcome back to another Rage and Legend video with me, The Real Deal. So I've been lucky enough to pull one of my most wanted champions. He is a top three Aruna, Aruna? Arena Nuka right now, um, Hepifrak, or Hepfrak, and he is an absolute beast. If you've pulled him, congratulations. He is a definite six star straight away. He is going to do so much for your account. Tag 3v3, Arena. I mean, he'll do some work in lower levels of dungeons, but you know, arena is where he really shines and he is going to do so much for your account. Um, so let's talk about skills um, first. So his passive instantly activates his A2 and it will not put the skill on cooldown. So basically, if one of your teammates dies, he's going to come in and do big boy damage, hopefully, lay some people down. Um, and yeah, and then you get to go again with it. So, what does his A2 do? He attacks all enemies, places an extra hit on targets with less than 50% HP after the first hit. Each hit will ignore 15% of the target's defense. So this is almost like having built-in Savage. It's not quite as strong as Savage, but it's still pretty strong, and that's what increases your damage a lot. Um, and because of this, you can get away with putting him in Stone Skin. So that is why he's so good. Um, also, his A3 places an increased buff, attack buff on himself and 30% increased crit rate. I would say you still want to build him with 100% crit rate just because if you don't have that, it doesn't, his passive isn't going to do as much work for you. So you're only going to have 70% chance and you want 100% if you want to drop people. So, and then basically he's going to do the increase, um, increase ourselves with these buffs and then we get an extra turn. And then we get to go with our A3. Oh, sorry, A8. A, 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 with our A2. And then his A1 attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if this critical attack, a critical hit. Of course it is. We've got 100% crit rate. Um, and yeah, it's going to hit twice and it hits hard. Um, and this guy's multipliers are off the chain. So as you can see, I'm lucky enough to have mine six star, fully ascended, fully awakened. Um, and I tried to go with Soul Reap. Um, so it's a bit of a toss up. I mean, I'm going to be using him offensively. So that's why I've decided to go Soul Reap because it's going to hopefully finish people off. And if it doesn't, it's going to put True Fear on them, which is one of the best debuffs. You know, it can just completely mess up the enemy's skills, put them on cooldown, and they can waste a turn as well. Alternatively, you could also go Lightning Cage. Um, which is it's a good option as well. They are both really good options. Um, but Lightning Cage will basically prevent you from having your stone skin stolen from you. And it does do some damage as well. So it's really difficult. Um, I don't know. You know, it's, they're both good options. It really is sort of split 50-50 for me. But yeah, I decided to go Soul Reap in the end. So let's check out the build. Um, so we've gone fully stone, full stone skin. And this is just to give us loads of protection. And basically, if one of our teammates dies, we're going to come in, do loads of damage, and still be protected by that stain skin. This is one of the reasons why he is a top three arena champion. I'm just going to go through every single piece just so you can see what I'm doing. So we've gone for a little bit of speed. But essentially, you want crit rate, crit damage on every single piece, and then attack percentage as well. And even a bit of resistance is nice. Um, we've got um, crit damage on the gloves, attack percentage on the chest, attack percentage on the boots. Then we've got an attack ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then attack on the banner. Um, and as you can see, I've been very lucky and we've managed to get reaction pieces for every single piece as well, which is also going to help us with that survivability. So let's look at his total stats. So 34k HP, um, 6k attack um 141 speed so you, this you know, I could probably push this up to 160 140 to 160 is where you want him to be um crit rate almost bang on the money there 101 you want a hundred percent crit rate uh and then we've got 295 crit damage i'd say early to mid you're gonna be looking around 200 mid to late you could be aiming for about 250 
And then the only other stat that can be sort of useful is resistance. So a little bit of resistance is nice on him to stop you getting stripped of that stain skin. Uh, other gear sets you could put him in. Um, Swift parry would be nice. Um, but that's a bit more RNG. And that sort of relies on you to go first more. So you're not going to be using your passive. Um, but you could also put him in full savage as well. So if you're going to put him in full savage, you need certain champions to do that. So for example, someone like Necred, who's going to protect him. And while your other teammates are getting popped off, he can then come in with his passive and drop people for you. Or another champion that's really good is uh, Gofred, if you've got him. So his passive is whenever an ally... No, sorry, here. If an ally is about to get killed by a fatal hit, blocks the incoming damage and places a block damage buff on them for one turn. So what you can sort of do there is basically um, if your Hefrak is about to get hit, he's going to, you know, basically protect him, put block damage on him, and then your Hefrak is going to turn around and drop them. And that's how Hefrak works. He's a bit like, it's just like a looming dread over him. So basically either they kill one of your teammates and Hefrak comes in and just wipes the team, or they can't kill Hefrik, and basically he just you just sort of get this wave of dread. He just comes in and then just drops your team. So it is really difficult. The other thing I want to say as well is that I've not even glyphed him yet. He's not even fully glyphed. So I probably can get another 500, maybe even a thousand attack on him as well. So I could really bump up his damage as well. So masteries. Um, I've gone for offense and defense. Of course, that's how you want to build him. Um, but you could also um, be slight. You could, there's a slight variation you could do on the offensive tree. So uh, defense, just very sort of standard. Going into retribution so we can get counterattacks, but also deterrence as well. So basically, if any of our allies have any um, um, CC on them, we can turn around and slap people with our A1. So offense, gone crit rate into crit damage. Singled out, so we'll do more damage to enemies with less than 40% HP. Bring it down, so for targets that have more HP than us, we're going to do 6% more damage to them. Kill streak is a very good option because, of course, we're going to be popping people and that's going to increase our damage. And then we're going to see taking Helm Smasher, so we have that 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the target's defense. Uh, then we're taking Shield Breaker just in case the enemy do have shields. This is going to increase the damage that we do by 25%. And there's a lot of people that make a big mistake where they'll put Divine sets on their champion. So they may just put on what, uh, like, one P, like one set. And, you know, so what happens then is say they've got two pieces of Divine Speed. You get a very, very small shield. Um, but then we get to do loads of damage to them and just increasing our damage by 25%. So it is a really stupid thing to do, basically. So don't do it. Um, if, you, you know, if you're going to put on Divine Pieces or a Shield set, make sure you're putting big shields, because otherwise, if someone's got a, just, just this mastery, it's going to increase the damage that they do to your champion by loads. Um, yeah, so you need to be careful with that. We're going to take Ruthless Ambush, just to increase the damage of our first hit. Um, and then we're going to do all, uh, Opportunities, so if you've got someone that's going to do stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification, that's going to increase our damage as well by 12%. So alternatives you could take. Um, so instead of singled out, you could take whirlwind of death. Basically, if you kill people, that's going to increase your speed up to 18%. So basically, if people survive, um, you know, you might kill a few champions, but then if they get revived, and they, then you see your second go, you need to be fast so you can basically cut in. Instead of taking Bring It Down, you could potentially take Cycle of Violence as well. Um, sorry, take well, uh, Wrath of the Slain. So basically your allies, they've died, and that's going to increase your damage as well. Um, and instead of Opportunist, you could also take Cycle of Violence. So basically, because we're doing so much damage, this is going to uh, reduce the cooldown of our skills, meaning that we can do more damage. We looked at the Masteries, we looked at the skills, we looked at the Blessings. Now let's take him into the arena. Okay, so this is the team that I've built. Um, so we've got Pytheon for revives. Um, he's also in a stone skin set as well. So they're both going to be really hard to kill. I've got Constantine as a nuker. 
is like a secondary nuker. But if he dies, that's fine because we can revive him. But also, um, you know, he's going to trigger our passive for um, Hefrek. And then we've also got Hegemon in there, who is going to obviously go first, hopefully um, either lock people's abilities, but also he's in a day set, so put people to sleep for us. So let's uh, let's see what happens. And this is a really strong team comp we're going against. We should count a Tormen, make him pretty much useless. And we are going to push back the turn meter of Tormen. So everyone's been cleansed. Constantine's going to come in. Didn't do too much damage, um, I guess, with that strengthen. Let's uh, cleanse and put out uh, block debuffs. Okay, now it's time for Hefrek to shine. Let's see what he's made of. Oh, look at that damage. So as you can see, he out damaged Constantine right there. And Constantine is a hard hitting nuka. Um, this guy is a beast. So now we need to sort of start taking people out. So let's take out Lydia first. And then we are going to go for, let's take out Mithrala next. Try and steal the buffs. Not quite. Yeah, Hefrek, finish it off. So now we need to take out Pytheon. And this is going to be a little bit tricky. Damn. So now we need to revive, um, which could cause us some issues. Oh no. All right, so <laughs> good old Constantine came in there and got the job done for us. So that is team number one. Let's move on to team number two. So I saw another strong team here. So this looks like a really annoying team comp. Um, I'm going to switch up a little bit. And we are going to bring in... Um, Who are we going to bring in? Um, bring in Liores. There's a good chance that um, that Rotus is going to take him out. But also I want to bring in Madame. So I really want to strip. So this is my third Madame and she's also in a stone skin set. Basically we just want to try it and strip the team of any buffs they have. So this may not, okay, so we probably can take out um, Duchess. And yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's just put out cleanse and uh, block debuffs. So let's charge up and let's smack. And there we go. Easy, easy W, easy win. So. You know, I know that I'm using end game team uh, champions here, but look at that as a strong defense and you've got to bring in the big guns when you come up to this sort of stuff. You know, um, you could easily replace this with a load of other champions. But ideally, I'd say bringing in a reviver that's got stone skin in and you can use epic champions, but as long as they can revive, you should be fine. Um, ideally, you do want to bring in some that can strip as well, because if you go against a team that's got stone skin, you do want to be able to strip. Um, and I think he does pair up really nice with a second Nuka like Liores that we've got here. Um, it doesn't have to be Liores though. Of course, you can just fill in any hard hitting Nuka. Even a Gembo would do the job nicely. And if they die, it doesn't matter because, you know, Hebfrek is going to get his second go and drop heads for you. But yeah, um, I don't think there's much else to say. Like, as you can see, he's a really strong Nuka. He has sort of overstepped on people like Trunda. Um Trunda's still obviously a really good champion, but you know, he is sort of taking that place just because of that ability of being able to proc his A2, but also just being able to go in that stone skin and still do loads of damage. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.